On today's show, Jeep says it can double sales to 3 million vehicles annually. Land Rover teases an all-new SUV, and Americans waste a lot of time stuck in traffic. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Car drivers in the U.S. waste a whole lot of time stuck in traffic. Inrix, a company that analyzes traffic data, just released a study covering over 1,000 cities and 38 countries. And it found that the U.S. is the most congested developed country in the world. On average, drivers spent 42 hours a year stuck in traffic during peak hours in 2016. And as they say, time is money. The direct and indirect cost of the congestion is about $300 billion a year, an average of $1,400 per driver. Los Angeles is not only the most congested city in the U.S. at 104 hours, it's also the most congested in the world. In fact, four other cities in the U.S., New York, San Francisco, Atlanta, and Miami, rank in the top 10 most congested cities globally. A better economy, low gas prices, and continued population growth all contribute to the jams. Outside the U.S., Moscow is the most congested city, and Thailand is the most congested country. Automakers and suppliers are making a lot of progress when it comes to self-driving cars. But in order for them to be safer and more efficient, they'll need high-definition maps that can identify and update changes on the road with near real-time speed. And that's why BMW partnered with Mobileye, a company that makes vision-based advanced driver assistance systems. The automaker will integrate Mobileye's road experience management system in new BMW starting in 2018. The vehicle's camera will collect real-time data and information, which will be kept private and then transferred to HERE, a mapping company. It will then be used to update maps needed for automated driving. The data can be also combined with the data from other automakers to create an even more comprehensive map. BMW is targeting 2021 as to when it will have autonomous cars on the road. And still to come, Ford and Cadillac upgrade their infotainment systems. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Yen Feng, experience in motion. There are estimates that by 2020, 90% of all new cars will offer voice recognition systems, and Ford is working to make them even better. When its new Sync 3 infotainment system launches this summer, customers will be able to connect to Amazon's virtual assistant Alexa, which understands 23 different languages and local accents. The automaker is also currently conducting a research project using multiple microphones in a car to improve speech processing and reduce the effect of external noises. And it can see a future when in-car camera systems monitor our facial expressions. So our cars could play a mellow song or tell us a joke when we're sad, or maybe offer up advice, or keep you alert when you're getting tired. You know, it is kind of cool, but it's also kind of creepy. You know, there has never been such a dynamic time in the automotive industry. Don't miss any of the action. Get AutoLine Daily delivered to your inbox every day. Subscribe for free and stay on top of the latest news. Cadillac is getting set to launch the next generation of its touchscreen infotainment system. It says it offers a more personalized, intuitive interface with easier access to the most common features. But I think Cadillac is still going a little too heavy on the amount of touchscreen functions, especially climate control. It can be very difficult to adjust something like the seat heater while bouncing down the road. But let's focus on some of the system's unique features. There's a new connected navigation system, which gets information from cloud-based services and will update points of interest, give live traffic information, fuel prices, and parking information. Over time, it can learn a user's preferences. The only problem? It's an opt-in subscription-based system. Owners will also be able to customize their own profile, including vehicle and display settings, contacts, route preferences, 
and recent destinations, which is stored in the cloud and can be transferred to any Cadillac with this new system. So the automaker clearly has ride sharing on its mind. New Cadillac CTSs arriving in the first quarter of this year will be the first to get it, then XTS and ATS with the start of 2018 model year production, and the rest of the lineup is scheduled to adopt the system in future model years. Coming up next, why Jeep believes it can double its global sales. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Toyota and supplier company Denso have developed a new exhaust catalyst that is smaller and uses fewer precious metals compared to current ones. It's the first application of an integrally molded, flow-adjustable design cell substrate which optimizes the ratios of cross-sectional areas of cells at the inner and outer portions of the catalyst. Well, so what does that mean? Well, the bottom line is, it uses 20% fewer precious metals, which reduces the volume of the catalyst by 20%, while still being able to clean the exhaust gas as well as it did before. The company says this new catalyst will gradually be equipped in its new vehicles, starting with the Lexus LC500H later this year. For more of the technical details of the new Catalyst, just look for the link in today's transcript. Those of you watching on YouTube, just look for the link to the transcript in the description box below. The Jeep brand sure is growing fast. Last year, 1.4 million Jeeps were sold worldwide, and Fiat Chrysler is targeting 2 million by the end of next year. But what about after that? Mike Manley, the head of the Jeep brand at FCA, tells Autoline, there's no reason why the brand couldn't reach 3 million sales sometime in the future. Of the 1.4 million Jeeps sold last year, 1 million were sold in North America. So the potential for growth in China, Europe, and the rest of the world is huge. This year, Jeep gets the redesigned Compass and Wrangler and a refreshed Grand Cherokee, which will help its sales momentum. But then it starts expanding its lineup with a China-only model in 2018, a mid-sized pickup truck in 2019, and the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer in early 2020. Manley also sees the opportunity for a Jeep smaller than the Renegade, but not for the U.S. market. Speaking of SUVs, Land Rover is teasing a new model it's adding to its lineup. Called the Velar, the name is taken from Range Rover prototypes from 1969, and it's going to slot in between the Evoque and the Range Rover Sport. Land Rover didn't reveal any other info, so we'll have to wait for more details when it makes its debut on March 1st. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and please join us again here tomorrow.